So good morning, everybody. My name is David Leon. I'm the benefits manager here. And um, we're going to talk today about your medical plan and the wellness program um, in advance of open enrollment. Um, you might notice that we're recording. Um, it's going to be posted online for uh, associates to watch, families to watch at home. Um, so I'm going to ask that you save your questions till the end of the presentation. Um, and we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So what we'll cover today is uh, the changes for 2015 to the benefit plans. We'll talk about the medical plans in detail, compare them, uh, wellness steps, and the cost of your plan, making the most of your plan, and some next steps and resources. So what's changing in 2015? Um, minimal changes to the medical vision and dental rates, uh, between 1% and 4%. Expanded benefits, um, pharmacy copays apply to your out-of-pocket maximum. This is per the Affordable Care Act. Um, vision allowances are going to increase by $10 for frames and contacts. Um, and tobacco cessation, counseling, and pharmaceuticals are covered. Again, per Affordable Care Act. Bigger changes for the wellness steps and incentives. You may have seen some communication and information released already talking about the wellness steps. There's three steps to complete for your wellness incentive. Um, there's also a non-smoker affidavit that could be considered a fourth step. We'll talk about that more in the second half of the presentation. There's a new type of incentive for the HRA plan for single coverage only. Um, instead of the premium reduction that we've had in past years, it's going to be the health fund contribution. And then the deadlines moved up a little bit, November 30th rather than December 31st. So let's talk about the medical plan options first. And before we do that, let's talk about some terms that are running all throughout the medical plan discussion. The premium is the amount taken out of your paycheck on a biweekly basis, pre-tax. Out-of-pocket spending is what you spend at the doctor's office at the point of service. And the out-of-pocket max is the maximum amount you spend at the doctor's office. After you hit your out-of-pocket max, the plan pays for everything. The deductible is the amount you pay out-of-pocket before the plan starts to contribute. Coinsurance is after you hit your deductible, the plan starts to contribute, uh, but you share costs. So for example, 80-20 split would be one way to pay coinsurance. Copay is a flat fee you pay, usually for doctor's office visits, $20, $40 for specialist. It's the same every time. And again, those copays accrue towards your out-of-pocket max, but not to your deductible. So here are the two plans. We'll compare them. Um, the Choose Your Path PPO, slightly more expensive premiums. Um, so more money coming out of your paycheck, but it's generally less expensive when you actually go to the doctor's office. The HRA plan is less expensive in terms of biweekly premiums, but a little bit more expensive when you actually use medical services. Important to note that there is no difference in network or services covered. The two plans cover the same doctors and the same services. So here's a graphical representation of the Choose Your Path PPO plan. Um, on the left, you can consider uh, the, the pointy end of the structure to be higher dollars. So as more money gets spent on medical services, the pay structure changes. Um, on the right are details that correspond to the way the payment breaks down. So at the bottom on the left, in the green box, you can see that uh, preventive services are covered 100%. So your annual physical covered 100%, various types of cancer screenings covered 100%. You start paying when you're getting into diagnostic and treatment. So if you get uh, an x-ray or if you get some blood work at the lab, that's when you start paying under the PPO plan. Um, you start with your co-pays for primary care. That's just your typical doctor's visit, um, $40 for a specialist. Then if you're talking about those treatment options like labs, x-rays, that's when you're paying under your deductible. 
up to $500 for associate only, for example, $1,000 for associate plus spouse, $1,500 for family, twice that for out-of-network care. And you'll notice this throughout, out-of-network care is more expensive. United Healthcare doesn't negotiate prices um, with as deep of discounts as the network providers. So out-of-network, you're gonna see higher uh, costs than in-network. So once you hit your deductible, then the plan starts helping to pay. And that's the coinsurance band where it says you and Eddie Bauer pay. In the PPO plan, Eddie Bauer's paying 80% of the costs and uh, individuals paying 20% of the costs up to the out-of-pocket maximum, $2,500 for associate only, $5,000 uh, for associate and spouse or family. Above that level of payment, if you've paid that amount, the plan pays everything else. So here you're talking about complicated treatment, surgery, things like that are gonna be where you hit your out-of-pocket max and the plan starts paying for everything. Again, with the co-pays um, back towards the bottom, um, those accrue towards your out-of-pocket max. So if you make 100, well, let's say 10 visits, you're paying $20 each for primary care. That's $200 accruing towards that 2,500 out-of-pocket max. And again, same thing for pharmaceuticals in 2015. That's a new plan feature. The HRA plan's a little different. You'll notice at the bottom we have this blue box, the health fund. And again, with the caveat that preventive care in network covered 100%. After that, you're using your health fund for first dollar coverage. So if you're in an associate only plan, you've got $500 to spend out of your health fund if you do your wellness steps, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. Associate plus spouse, you have $1,000, associate and family, $1,375. You're using that money again for any kind of diagnostic treatment services up to, uh, well, up to the point where it runs out. So at a certain point, you might not have any money left in your health fund, but you'll still be under your deductible in terms of your annual spending. And that's when you'll spend out of pocket until you hit the deductible. 1250 for associate only, 2500 for associate spouse, and 2875 for family. You hit your deductible and then you're back into the coinsurance level where you're splitting costs. In the HRA plan, the cost split is 90-10. So the company's picking up more money in coinsurance in this plan. You're paying coinsurance until you hit the out-of-pocket max, which you might notice are similar numbers to the PPO plan, $2,500 for associate only, 5,000 for associate plus spouse or children, 5,375 for family coverage. The nice thing about the HRA plan is that if you don't use medical services, if you're not paying for any kind of doctor's visits or hospital visits, it just rolls over year to year, up to 90% of your out-of-pocket max, which for example, if you're in associate only coverage, $2,500, 90% of that is $2,250. You can accrue that much in your health fund. So year over year, that can be very beneficial. Here, we see a plan comparison. And you might have already received materials that we sent to your home that has a more detailed version of this side-by-side -side comparison. But we wanted to talk a little bit about it here today. What you're looking at on the left-hand side of the page is uh, the level of coverage. So health fund, annual deductible, out-of-pocket max, uh, lifetime maximum at the bottom, there's none, again, per Affordable Care Act. And then in the columns, we have the two plans split out and then split further into network and non-network costs. So you can see in the top band, Health fund, there's nothing in the PPO plan because there is no health fund in the PPO plan. In the HRA plan, we've got the health fund contributions the company makes annually, $500 if you do your wellness steps, $50 if you don't for associate-only coverage, 
1,000 for associate plus spouse and children, 1,375 for family. Annual deductible. Here's where you can see a difference. Real difference here, the HRA plan has higher deductibles. Now, the health fund helps take those deductibles down a little bit. So, associate only coverage, deductible of 1250. If you have $500 in your health fund though, that's going to pay for $500 under that deductible and you'll be paying 750 out of pocket. That being said, the PPO has much lower deductibles. $500 for associate only, 1000 for if you're covering any dependents. And again, you'll notice the out of network costs are higher. Now we go to out of pocket maximum and you might notice here that the numbers are pretty similar. For associate only, it's $2,500. For associate plus spouse and children, it's 5,000. And for family coverage under the HRA plan, it's 5,375 compared to 5,000 in the PPO plan. Again, in network costs, the out of network costs are significantly higher. Um, here's where the plans don't differ very much. The maximum exposure you're gonna have under either plan is pretty similar. So in terms of what services are actually covered, we'll start with preventive care. As I mentioned earlier, preventive care is covered at 100% in network, not necessarily going to be covered out of network. Sometimes for screenings and tests, you'll pay uh, 40%. The plan will cover 60% after you either meet your deductible if you're in the PPO plan or after you exhaust your health fund and meet the deductible in the HRA plan. Office visits in the PPO plan, $20 copay for office visits, 40 for specialists. In the HRA plan, the plan's covering 90% of the cost after you use your health fund and after you meet the deductible. Other types of services that the plan covers include hospital care, emergency care, what we're calling most other services, which is what it sounds like, and prescription drugs. For hospital care, the HRA plan covers 90% after you use your health fund and pay the deductible. The Choose Your Path PPO covers 80% after the deductible and a $250 copay. Similar with emergency care, the PPO plan covers 80% after the deductible is met and a $100 copay. The HRA plan same coverage for both hospital care and emergency care. It covers 90% of the costs after you use your health fund and meet the deductible. Prescription drugs are categorized by tier depending on effectiveness. Tier one are the most effective, tier two and tier three are less cost effective. So the cost for each of those tiers is arranged in a way where tier one is the least expensive and tier three is the most expensive. So let's talk about some of the new features of the plans in 2015. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, vision allowance increases from $120 to $130. And the plans covering tobacco cessation, both prescription drugs and counseling. This is a new feature pursuant to the Affordable Care Act. Now let's talk about wellness steps. That's why a lot of people are here, I'm sure. So wellness steps, um, to get the incentive, to get either the lowest premium or the maximum health fund contribution in 2015, we're asking people to take three steps. And this uh, chart shows the three steps. What's not on here is the tobacco uh, user affidavit or non-user affidavit. We want people to reaffirm that they either do or do not use tobacco them uh, and their spouse. Um, when you signed up for the plan, you did that. You may or may not remember that, but we were asking people to reconfirm their tobacco user status. And again, if you use tobacco, we have the cessation program that we were happy to offer. So step one, same as in past years, 
um, associates and spouse and dependents complete either your yearly physical exam or your biometric screening. We had biometric screenings here in Bellevue on site last week. Um, we have them as well this year off site. So if you're not in Bellevue or uh, one of our other central locations, you can register for biometric screening at any number of labs all around the country. Step two, uh, this is a new step. We have here a menu of options to choose from, either a preventive care dental visit, a flu shot, or participating in the 401k plan if you're not already participating. If you're already participating, increasing your contribution by 1%. For store associates, we're asking, uh, well, we're offering another option, and that's the health risk assessment online on the United Healthcare site. And the reason we're offering these steps is that we have, uh, we have a commitment to associate health, and these things have been shown to positively impact health and productivity. Step three um, is not new in and of itself, but there's another option of step three. So the education session is this session. We're also offering an education session having to do with the 401k plan. Um, our new 401k administrator, Putnam, has an online video you can watch. We had some in-person sessions. Maybe you made it to one of those. We're also asking uh, associates to consider a Live Your Adventure activity. We offer a wide range of activities at multiple locations you can participate in. And they're usually something active and outdoors, connected with the company culture and what we're about, and supportive of uh, overall health and well-being. So here are the incentives. You do those steps. Here's what happens when you do those steps, or if you don't do those steps. If you take all three steps, you'll pay the lowest per paycheck premiums, or if you're associate-only coverage in the HRA plan, you get your $500 health fund contribution. If you don't take all three steps, you're paying higher per pay period premiums, or you're getting a minimal contribution in your health fund, $50. And at the bottom, you'll see that if you are using tobacco, if either you or your spouse uses tobacco, you pay an extra $46 per pay period, even if you do all three wellness steps. If you don't do all three wellness steps, the tobacco surcharge becomes moot because you're paying the higher cost anyway. So here are the costs you might recognize from your paycheck this year. So you can see on the left side, if you took your wellness steps, or maybe you only took one of them, and then across the top, which plan are you in, HRA or PPO? Which level of coverage do you have? You can locate how much you're paying per paycheck right now. Here are the prices in 2015. Again, wellness step on the left, plan across the top, HRA, PPO, associate only, or if you're covering dependents. So what you're going to notice here, depending on which level of coverage and which plan you're in, the costs are increasing between 1 and 4%. So these are actually for medical plan cost increases, very good. It's very similar to inflation. Um, usually plan costs trend around 8% per year. That's usually what projections are. So we're happy that our costs stayed low this year. The wellness step deadline, November 30th. The question that I've been getting is what if I have my annual physical in December? The answer to that question is we cover annual physicals once per calendar year, so it doesn't matter what month you're in. Your doctor's office may want you to have the same month every year. That's a conversation you can have with them, and if they won't change it, call Associate Services. Um, we'll, we can talk more about that. But generally, people are, uh, are looking at a November 30th deadline for all three steps. Um, 
On the associate compass, you'll find your wellness step verification form. Also the doctor's visit form if you're doing the doctor's office for step one. Uh, go onto the compass, download the form, fill it out, send it back in to us at associate services in HR and we'll uh, help you track your steps. We have a website set up that's live today that you can see what your status is, which steps you've completed so far. Back to the plan comparison, we also have, as we've had in past years, an online tool you can use that takes into account the premiums and the out-of-pocket costs for both plans. You input some information about how many doctor's visits you expect to make and which type of doctor's visits you expect to make, and it'll give you a projection of how your costs might compare in the coming year. Making the most of your plan, there's a few things you can do to maximize the value of the benefit plan you're in. You can, if you know you're going to be spending money on the plan, you can make it tax-free by enrolling in the flexible spending account. Up to $2,500 a year, this is pre-tax uh, deduction similar to your pre-tax medical premium. It goes into an account that you can use when you use medical services, and it's never taxed. It's tax-free money. Um, so if you know you have some services coming up in the coming year, you may want to consider enrolling in a flexible spending account. If you're already doing this uh, this year, you need to re-enroll for next year. So you have this money set aside in the account for medical services this year. If you want to set aside money next year, you need to re-enroll. It doesn't roll over. Then I'd like to just mention that on the MyUHC site, this is United Healthcare's website, um, there's a tab called Estimate Healthcare Costs. You do need to log into the site to use this. If you haven't done so already, it's worth visiting the site. There's a lot of information on there, including explanation of benefits and plan information. This is an interesting feature, um, especially if you're in the HRA plan and you're spending your own money under the deductible and after your health fund. Compare some plan costs for services that are voluntary. So imaging, for example, what we have on here shows a screenshot of how imaging services costs can vary. Um, you might not be able to see that here in the room, um, but perhaps you'll see it better online. $300, $500 difference in cost. And this is for the same service. This is for an MRI just at two different locations. The cost of medical services can vary tremendously for the exact same service in the exact same city. So it's worth checking this out, especially if you're looking at spending money out of pocket. So some next steps. Now through mid-October, say within the next week or so, you're gonna wanna review the benefits materials package that was delivered to your home. Um, you can visit the Associate Compass uh, for more detail, use the interactive tool to compare plans. October 24th is the last day of open enrollment, so you want to make any decisions by then. If you don't want to change anything about your current plan, then you don't need to do anything. If you want to add, drop yourself from coverage or a dependent from coverage, or if you want to re-enroll in the flexible spending account, then you need to fill out an enrollment form and return it to Associate Services. Enrollment forms are on the Associate Compass. Then by November 30th, you want to complete all your wellness steps. Um, if you're not sure whether you've completed any yet or which ones you've completed, check Associate Compass. We have a step tracker and you can see where you stand. We update that weekly as well. So if you don't see something on there that you think should be on there, either uh, resend in your form or check back in a week, or you can contact Associate Services if something looks really wrong. Uh, here's the Associate Services email address. Um, you can also call the numbers on the Associate Compass. Uh, web address for Associate Compass is there. United Healthcare websites and phone number are up there as well. So that is the presentation for today.